Hi, Jamie here from White International. Today I'm going to walk you through the operation and functions of our next Pro Controller, our next generation of pump controlling system. The first key area of the next Pro Controller that is very unique and one of the technical aspects that you need to be aware of is the hydraulic design. Under the next controller series, all units come with a removable one inch fitting on top and bottom, that's a swivel fitting, it allows for the controller to rotate without breaking the seal and also allows for the controller to be installed without a union. This is good for easy servicing and great for overall design. To remove the fitting, you take a simple screwdriver, pop off the cover plate and you can see a clamp fitting in there. That clamp fitting can be removed by pushing a small screwdriver through the back hole sliding the clamp fitting out and then you're able to just slide the controller off the fitting. This fitting is then able to be changed, serviced and maintained without the controller installed. So later on, for example, if you need to change a controller or you need to clean the pump or clean the controller from debris, you can simply remove it, do the maintenance desired and push the controller back on. Once the controller is back on the pump, the clamp simply pushes back in, holds it securely, and then you put the cover plate back into place. Once done, that's it. It's a fully sealed unit, so it doesn't matter. The O-ring within inside, it doesn't matter what position it's on, it can be on any angle, allowing for adjustment for use and be able to see the display and prevent it from leaking. Those fittings are both available on the top and the bottom. An added advantage, particularly in the Pro unit, is that fitting can be changed for an inch and a quarter fitting, and that inch and a quarter fitting can give you flow rates up to 350 litres a minute with very little loss in pressure. One other hydraulic feature that we need to be aware of is the fact that on the Pro version, the pressure vessel on the back is removable. If you remove the pressure vessel, you're then able to connect through a one inch BSP fitting any other size pressure vessel you might require. For example, you might design to use it on a horizontal tank, either connected directly into the back of the device itself or even mounting the controller on the tank itself. Very straightforward, very simple to use and very easy to remove. The next Pro Controller comes pre-fitted with a digital display. The key areas that you need to be aware of on this display are as follows. Firstly, the LED display. It can show you items such as active pressure, active current of the motor, by pressing the reset button quickly it will change it, and any error codes that the system wants to display. Further, you need to know about the LED power light to tell you when the system has power, the mode 1 and mode 2 LEDs to indicate what operational function mode it's in, and of course the lack of water light, which assists in displaying errors, but also tells you when there's no water available from the source you're pumping. On the display you'll find four key buttons which allow you to change and edit and work with the functions of the controller. The first of which is the on and off button. By holding the on and off button, you're able to disable the pump that it's pumping and also to turn the system back on again. The reset button is designed if you hold it for three seconds to allow you to reset any of the configuration menus within the programming. Finally, the plus and minus buttons. These buttons allow you to navigate the programming and change the settings by scrolling up and down through each menu and through each setting as required. Through the next Pro Controller's digital display, you're able to adjust the function mode of the controller. What does this mean? Well, it effectively allows you to change from mode one to mode two and back again. Mode 1 allowing you to set the cut-in pressure of the system so that you can get the best optimization for where you want to operate. The system will still shut off using the flow valve like any normal electronic controller but it will operate according to the pressure you require. Mode 2 allows you to set both the cut-in and cut-out pressure. This allows you to set the operational band of the system and to get the best performance, very much like a traditional pressure switch 
but maintaining all of the protections that the controller operates like a normal electronic controller as you wish. To set this mode, you hold the reset button for a period of three seconds. Once the reset button has been held, you will see the first menu item that comes up says function mode one or F1. To set your cutting pressure from the default, which is 2.2 bar, you quickly press the reset button again, and then you're able to using the plus and minus key to set the cutting pressure you wish for the system. Once you've set it, by holding the set button again, it then has set the pressure and gone back into the mode it was previously to doing the setting. If you want to change the system into mode two, because you can tell by the mode one indicator light, it's still in mode one, you again hold the reset button for a period of three seconds, but this time press the plus button and it will take you to function mode two. By hitting the set button again, you can then set the cutting pressure from its default 2.2 bar and its cutout pressure which defaults at 4.8 bar. Then hold the set button again and now you can tell it's in mode 2 with a cutting pressure of 2.2 bar and a cutout pressure of 4.8 bar. They are both variable. One thing you should know, that the system operates using an auto restart. So at any time when the system runs out of water or a major error code occurs, it will try to restart the system four times and then restart after 24 hours. If you wish to reset the controller to its defaults, as mentioned previously, it's quite simple. Hold both the plus and minus key together, the screen will flicker, and then it will return to its default settings. The next Pro Controller comes with many advanced functions designed to make the system more robust and better for you. In order to set those advanced functions, you hold the reset button for three seconds. Using the plus key, scroll beyond the two function menus to get to the first one, which is overload. Overload is where you're able to set a current base, so the power being used by the motor, level for the controller to turn off. So on most controllers, when you have a, a stalled rotor, 15 amps is typically the minimum. By setting at 15 amps, when the pump's rotor or the impeller gets stuck, the controller will detect that extra load and shut down the system. Once you've set it, you hit the set key and it returns to default. In order to look at the next one again, you go back into the menu holding reset for three seconds. Scroll down to the next one, which is UL standing for underload. This is where you can set the detected run dry of the motor without the flow sensor. So in times where the flow sensor may be jammed or not functioning correctly, the motor will still shut off protecting the pump in system without the use of any sensor attached. This is done by reading the current of the motor. Now, how you set this can be a little bit complicated, but you look at the motor operating current, which is either on the plate of the motor or during operation through the display, and then you set this to approximately 90% of that current. By setting it at that, the motor will set will turn off once the motor drops below 90%. Once it's set, hit the set key again, and you've suddenly got run dry protection without the need of a, a sensor in the flow path. To get to the next advanced setting, you hold the reset key again. And if you flow down through the menus using the plus key, the next one is PF. PF stands for pressure flow. By doing this, you can enable and disable the controllers looking at the flow sensor for shutdown. This is very, very important when you have systems, for example, evaporative air conditioners, which require very low flow, but constant use. By disabling that and having the controller in mode two, it will require only pressure to turn the system on and off. Another advanced setting that comes within the controller, built in by going into the menu, is of course PR, which stands for pump run. By going into there, you can set the maximum run time of the pump before it will shut down in case of a broken pipe or a bad installation. From 30 to 60 to 90 to 120 minutes, 150 and beyond to 180. That allows you to run the controller for that amount of minutes and then shut down if it's left continually running. For example, irrigation is a great case. Broken sprinkler, broken pipe, once it gets to that 180 minutes or whatever setting it's set at, the pump will turn off and flick a pressure, a PR alarm. 
The controller also comes with frequent start protection. If you go into the menu and you scroll down, you will see the last menu item that allows you to set is for frequent starts. By setting frequent starts, one being enabled and zero being disabled, the controller will look to monitor the system and detect how many starts the pump has and if there are too many, it will shut it down to protect the motor. When that occurs, the screen will display FS to show that that alarm is occurring. The common error messages outside of those which we've talked about you're able to program is also OP, standing for overpressure. When the system has more than nine bar of pressure running through it, the controller will shut down to protect it from having too much pressure. Thank you.